It's another podcast for your ears to consume You can play it in the background while you clean your room It's funny and wholesome with relatable guests The host isn't famous but he's doing his best And now it's starting The podcast is starting Right now Welcome to Too Hot in the Mic, the only podcast where the guest is always hotter than the host Today, I'm sitting with Colby Jacobs. I was, I was actually, actually looking at your profile, profile earlier. earlier. I, was I was trying, trying to find like your earliest videos. videos. Yeah. And I was like, oh, the, the earliest thing, thing is from well. like January of 2022. Yes. Do you not like those early videos anymore? No, I love them. I think they're special in that like it was me stumbling into a platform I knew nothing about. And I had no experience in editing or writing or anything like that. So it was the first of the firsts for me. Yeah, I know early on, I used to make these weird videos where they would have like planets in the background and kind of like lo-fi music. And it was kind of like a meditation kind of thing where I was trying to say like, hey, you've been scrolling for a while. Just stop and breathe here for a little bit because I was just trying to get traction and trying to get eyes on my channel but now i wouldn't consider that anything that i would put on my channel yeah it's interesting there's some stuff that people put on tiktok that goes viral but it's not anything that like i as a company would like hire or you know i feel like there's a difference between trends and video making skill and they both have the same chance of going viral Mm -hmm. but there's one that i feel like i don't know well, you're trying to say like the videos you make are, are trying to serve a dual purpose. Like you want mm-hmm. to entertain, but you're also putting them out there as a kind of resume. Yeah. For or content creation work or acting work. Yeah, but sometimes we do make the fast trends or the ones we know might go viral because we want to build an audience. And I feel like that's how a lot of TikTokers get stuck in one genre. And speaking of audience, you've recently hit like a big milestone, 100,000 followers, right? As of today, as of this recording, you're at 101. How does that feel to hit that milestone? It feels pretty good. It was really exciting to get 100,000. I will say it felt like a bigger milestone when I actually reached 1,000 and it was celebrated a lot more because it took me like two years to get to 1,000. <laughs> And then I've gotten up from 1,000 to 101,000 since May. I think that happens to a lot of people when we hear that story. Whenever their videos like start going viral or like they just have one video or a series like you had. Yeah, that's how I got stuck in that series. It was a good series, Mm -hmm. but you know, you want to pump out other content. And then once you start doing that, TikTok stops pushing out your videos. Um, And speaking Uh, speaking about that, that. let's go to our first segment. You popped off. We talk about your most viral video. Any idea what it was? It was the Greek pick me girl video. It was the Greek pick me girl. I actually prefer to feed myself grapes. I know. So don't try to feed them to me. Don't try. Sometimes I sacrifice a fish instead of lamb just to see what happens. 5.8 5.8 million. Well, you know right <laughs> away. That's so funny. I have it pinned at the top of my page. So, oh, so you see it often. <laughs> see it, yeah. So that was your second Pick Me Girl video, correct? It was. It's my second Pick Me Girl video. And just walk me through that experience. What was it like whenever something not only performs well, but performs that well and gets sent to that large of an audience? It felt really good. You have this like initial thought and shock of like, wow, I cracked the code. I picked the best idea. This is what works. I know it works now. And then you realize like a lot of it is luck and the algorithm, whatever that means. It still feels really good. And I'm really proud of that series. It pushed me to be a morning person. I was getting up pretty early to film those TikToks and get them out there and it pushed me to be more creative. I was writing every day, which was really cool. And it opened up a lot of new channels for me, like editing and being creative more on a schedule. Yeah, just a lot of opportunities to learn different skills. Yeah. When you were making those, and I guess it was kind of what you touched on earlier, you say that 
you know, sometimes when you make a certain type of video, TikTok or other social medias, once you keep making similar content, what's, what's that, that like, like for you? you? Do you, you like, like go, go for, for it? it? Do you, you change? change? Like what's important to you? Or like, what do you find with a challenge with that? Pick Me Girl was supposed to be a series, thankfully. So it wasn't like one went viral and I was like, oh, I gotta hop on this bandwagon and ride the wave. It was like, oh, okay, I was already gonna be riding this wave, but now I'm just gonna take it more seriously. Um, but that was super fun because it felt like there was endless opportunities and costumes and eras and I didn't really ever feel bored with that one. But I do feel like it was hard to transition out of it once I started posting other stuff. The new material was like kind of plummeting <laughs> and not getting almost any views. And then when I would try to switch back to Pick Me Girls, those videos inevitably weren't getting as many views anymore either. So what I would say is if... TikTok or Instagram is a platform that you're trying to use as a form of income and you have something go viral, try to ride that wave for a while just to gain audience members um, and traction and numbers. And then once you feel comfortable or bored or like you've gotten what you could from that, then move on to something you're more interested in or keep trying new stuff. There are some people who have channels where they do the same similar character or premise like every time and god bless them god bless them <laughs> for me and i feel like the same as for you is like that would steal a lot of the joy out of it yeah putting yourself in that box and then just <laughs> locking the key on your own because it brings more of those followers or numbers or anything and that point's like if i'm putting myself in that box what are the other people that i'm trying to impress gonna do if you want to be an actor or a writer or just, just any other kind of creative, creative just saying like hey look i can do this one thing really well yeah and i've already exhausted it all i just don't think anyone would want, want to, to hire, hire or like work, or work with, with someone, someone like that, that. Not, not in a, a bad, bad sense, sense but, but just, just in a sense of like, like it's, it's too niche, niche. It's, it's too cliche. cliche it is too niche and that works for people though there are some people like that that are so viral and they're making money off of it but i would just be so bored but other people have like niches and communities where they're still making new types of content like the cart girl that you love love the cart girl what's her name i have no idea she lives in florida we can call her barbie cart barbie cart we love her because sure it's like she has like a topic mm -hmm. like which is being a cart girl but she makes a wide range of videos and gets to have like total like creative control of like what she does and all of her stuff is super different it's kind of just like lifestyle like day to day whatever she's feeling Mm -hmm. which would be nice to just be able to talk about whatever <laughs> it just always goes viral so you've so had a, like a pick me like up you feel like or like, you said like, or you said like i really started putting effort into this only this last year how did that get started what was that process like for you egg party as a house went to la for netflix as a joke mm -hmm. and, and describe egg party real quick Egg Party is a group of six content creators that all live in the same house. We all went to college together. We were in the same improv troupe and we're all best friends. And we were very sad during the pandemic. And so we were like, should we all live together? And so Tiffany and Gabe moved down from Spokane, Washington. Caroline moved from Lafayette, Louisiana. And then Noah moved from Houston. And Lucas and I were here in Austin already. And now we all live in one lovely house. We make content every day. Um, so we went to LA for Netflix as a joke, got bean boozled by the shows, but it was really good and inspiring to like take a week to just be creative. Like it wasn't like, oh, 100% vacation mode. It truly was like be creative this week. Like your job is to be creative and like act as though making content is what you're getting paid for this week. I came back with a new mindset from that week and I think it was just two weeks later that my video started popping off which was super great and when you talk about egg party kind of fostering that with that trip is that the same here in austin do you feel like this community just helps you be more creative in that sense this community definitely helps me be more creative i think that's why we all moved in together as well one to be happy but also because we knew we would never make this content if we were just like neighbors or lived in different parts of the same city it was like i will only be successful if you guys live across the hall from me. 
or downstairs from me. And that's why we are successful because there's always someone walking around with a camera or a light and someone's always asking you to be in a TikTok or film a TikTok or to pitch an idea or edit their rough draft of a sketch. And that's why we're successful. It's accountability, but also like when you see people be creative, it makes you want to be creative. I agree. It's like a inspiration kind of circle. Since yeah. everybody's walking around, it's always like, oh, well, if they're making a video, like, well, I want to make a video. Yeah. Oh, they made this joke. I think that's really funny. How can I riff on that? How can I help with that? It's also just so much less work when you live with six people to make content because you always have someone to hold the light or the boom mic or the camera or to like act with. You don't have to be all three characters and cameraman and light man and and edit the whole thing on yeah. top of that. There's just like, you know, can delegate the job. So it's just nice. It's a lot less stressful. And so to wrap up, you popped off. Circle back to your big video. Were you happy that it was that video? Or do you wish there was another video on your page that got that viral? I'm very happy that that video went viral because it was the first video I made after changing my mindset of you deserve to give yourself this time and you deserve to believe that you can make good content on your own you know because we were already successful as egg party at this point we had already reached 100k you know i had been trying so hard for two years on my own page and had barely gotten to a thousand um sorry i lost my train of thought i don't know where the rest of that was gonna go I feel like it was a pretty good answer, though. I am glad that this one popped off. There are a couple of other ones that were more like short films I had done, and I wished those would pop off, of course, as like an actor and a filmmaker. You always want your artsy ones to pop off, but it was very encouraging for me, like, oh, this is a good mindset. This pays off. And you did something interesting with that video, or the whole series in general, where you could have done a lot of research into the time periods, or you could have played it more willy-nilly. I remember you talking about, hey, I'm gonna like just kind of say things sometimes without doing the research to just drive engagement. Can you talk about that, that kind of mindset or like those kind of tricks you were thinking about? I didn't do any research on the Greek one and it was like the day after the first one had popped off, which was kind of like the Elizabethan one. Anyway, I was like, I guess I should wake up early and make this new TikTok, but I had no time to research it. <laughs> So I just kind of threw out my like thoughts and what I thought maybe was like Greek mythology and most of it is not accurate. And so that's why I think it popped off so hard because everyone's just arguing in the comments and everyone's just calling me out on what I said wrong or like arguing with each other. Those like history buffs, you guys are my favorite. That generation really, <laughs> loves, really Greek loves Greek mythology. mythology. I don't know if it's yes. all because, all of, Percy because Jackson, of Percy Jackson, but what do you think of those movies? First one was great. I don't agree. The f <laughs> I don't agree. I don't think the first Percy Jackson movie was great. Is this your hot take? I don't think it's that hot. As a Percy Jackson reader... This is what I hear when you say that. It's like if you were to say, you know, I didn't like the first Twilight movie. It's like, well, yeah. It wasn't good. That's not why people like it. I do like the first Twilight movie. Did you read the book? No. Okay. Let me prove my point. Oh, so you're saying, well, you, did you read the Twilight book? No. Okay. <laughs> I loved it. The problem with the two movies, we're getting way sidetracked on Percy Jackson, but the problem, the problem is, is that, that at the, at the end, end of the, the second, second movie, movie, they, they kill the, the, like, the, the main the bad, bad guy. guy. Really? Yeah. So it would be like if in Harry Potter, like they killed Voldemort in yeah. the second movie. And it's like, wait, we had way more books. We had <laughs> way more things to go through before we got there. Oh, so they kill him way later in the books? Yeah, like at the end of the books. Like he's Voldemort. Like at the end. I keep looking at the camera like it's a third person here. Like, can you believe, can you believe this? that? They ruined Percy Jackson? That's crazy. Well, I don't think I saw the second one, but I definitely didn't read the books. So like, I didn't care if I saw it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, it plummeted after the second one. So his poor Cyclops brother. So have you seen it or not? I don't know. His Cyclops brother's only in the second one. I don't know. I think you've seen it. I've at least seen it, the trailer. You've at least seen the Cyclops brother in some aspect. The first one was so good, though. The, yeah. the Lotus, the first Lotus Hotel. I honestly thought when White Lotus was coming out, the first season was announced, I thought it was going to do something with that. You thought it was like a Percy Jackson spinoff? Well, I thought there might be a little something. Like Supernatural something? Yeah. That's funny. But no, no, it wasn't. 
It's just it's an just amazing, amazing show. show. Mike White, if you're watching this. We would have voted for you on Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. Absolutely. You deserve to win. We hate Nick. No. <laughs> My, Nick was good. Yeah. Nick's great. We love you, Mike. Yeah. All right. It's time for Lucas's Big Ask. Are you ready? I'm always ready for Lucas's Big Ask. And I have, I have $20. $20. $20. No. All right. That was Lucas's Big Ask. All right. It's time for Lucas's Slightly Smaller Ask. Are you ready? Born ready. Okay. Can you do an impression of a pick me girl from a specific year? The year being 2016. 2016. 2016. Sophomore year of college, going into junior year. I feel like there was a lot of like, just because I was in college during this time, I feel like this has nothing to do with anyone else. But it was just like, I had like 17 jello shots at the party and literally didn't feel anything i drank a whole bottle of red wine that my 21 year old friend bought me and then i was like up at 6 a.m like ready to go you get hangovers ew ew yeah it was like a huge thing to be like oh my gosh i guess the sharpie's still in my arm from how many drinks i had 30 days ago oh my gosh i had 15 drinks like i wasn't even that drunk yeah and then to like since we weren't 21 yet We'd have like the little X's and stamps all over our hands that were so tacky. Yeah. And then you'd like not wash them up and shit a class. Like, <sighs> oh, I guess it's still kind of on there. Oops. Guess I'm a party girl. Were you a party girl in college? Yeah. I had six other roommates and they were all sorority girls. Do you see the Baylor Rush TikToks? Mm-mm. Like I've been seeing so many from Baylor. <laughs> TikTok wasn't huge when we were in school. No. It was still musically it wasn't even TikTok yet. Yeah, it was those where you could like randomly match with people and sing a song. Yeah. I did it a couple of times with random people. Weird. We sang right? Adele. You could like make like little music videos, but it wasn't TikTok as we know it today. Now TikTok is so huge. Yeah. And I can't imagine being in college now. I keep seeing all these Baylor Tridel rush tiktoks they're like going viral because like they're so scary like they do the songs where they all sing together like a choir yeah untrained they do matching little dances and it's scary enough to see in person yeah it's overwhelming online Online, it's like like, ooh, ooh, now you can dissect dissect this this. you can can see see how how weird weird it really really is is. yeah because when you take it out of context it's very it's kind of like camp like a very intense camp taken out of context you wouldn't want anyone to see that crap you do weird traditions i guess like when you're in the moment you're like yeah this is fun this is part of it yeah because like a hundred other girls are doing it at the same time and they're telling you to do it and now it's getting broadcast everywhere yeah i saw one literally three million views wow baylor try delta try delta everybody else has they're gonna come get you for that I want them to. They're fun. That's actually That's a actually great a segue, great segue into, our into our next segment. The beef. The okay. beef. You know about the beef? The beef. Or about beef in general? Beef stew. Mm, close. Ragu beef. You're getting farther. So the beef is a segment where we try to stir up a little drama. Great. I love drama. We need internet beef between you and another creator. Is there another creator online that you know who's a fight on site? I feel like if I saw Tony, T-O-E-K-N-E-E, Tony. From Chicago? From Chicago. We would fight, but for clout. Like, we'd automatically, like, lock eyes and know we needed to fight. Because when two forces are so great, they collide. It's kind of like Superman and Batman. That's a good example. It's like Superman and Batman. It's like, you're not doing it because you hate each other. You're doing it because it's just too overwhelming forces two personalities going at war and it's kind of like a pr stunt a little bit uh, a lot of it it's like yeah. kim k and pete davidson we'd be like what would be better for us tony would it be for us to be best friends no it would be for us to be enemies i think that's a great idea so you're coming on this podcast today to declare that tony is your number one enemy colby's public enemy number one tony Wow. T-O-E-K-N-E-E. And so if he's ever in Austin or if you're ever in Chicago. And we lock eyes, we're locking fists too. I hope Tony doesn't see this. I hope he does. <gasps> wow, wow, wow. Wee wah. I'm not yawning because this is boring. I'm just yawning because I'm bored. I just don't understand what's the difference between those two things. Oh. Are you, are you getting in a little goofy mood after the beef? I'm in a little goofy mood after the beef. Well, that's great because our next segment is the improv segment. Oh. oh. You've done improv before? I've done improv before. 
How long? 20 years. Okay, the improv section hasn't started, so you have to give real answers first. Okay, sorry. I've been in improv since I was a <laughs> freshman in college. I was late to class one time freshman year, and it was <laughs> when... Uh, Lisa was doing like little improv scenes for the freshman touring so she made me go up to do a scene which I did with the Lucas McCutcheon. Wow it's like a theme on the show. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm there for everybody's little start. Little moments. Yeah the little spark I was there. I hated improv. I thought it was super stupid and then I did that scene and it was really good and everyone loved me and praised me and told me I should try out for this thing called G Troop. I was like, okay, I guess I will. And <laughs> auditions were literally in the middle of this dance recital I was in. So I was running back and forth from like auditions and callbacks to doing a tap number in front of the Baylor school dance moms, which like I'm not a tap dancer. <laughs> it was for a class. Anyway, I got into G Troop and that was the best thing that happened to me freshman year well let's see if we can recreate that magic here today would you like a random word generator or something happened to you this week that we can use as a prompt something good or something bad random word generator any guesses what the random word is going to be oh. will you stop yawning <laughs> i think the random word is going to be either some sort of like baked good or a flying animal a baked good or a flying animal let's hit it it's actually the word basic 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 do you know what that means like a basic bitch. Yeah, like a basic bitch. <sighs> this Starbucks line is long. That's why I ordered ahead. Yeah, but we still gotta wait in line to pick it up at the window. We do, because I don't want to go inside. I wore my slippers. Yeah, well, I'm wearing my house slippers. I'm wearing my house slippers. I'm wearing a robe, and I'm not wearing anything underneath it. That's just how I like it. I know. Hey, can I ask you? You can ask me anything you want, honey. Okay, we've been together for a long time, right? The longest time. And you know, I never bring up stuff like this. You never bring up stuff like this. So please, give me space to let it finish so I can say the whole thing, all right? You have nothing but space from me. Okay, I don't want to get scared and go into my turtle shell. I don't want that either, honey. Okay. I don't like Starbucks, and we get it every day. And I just don't think it's a good use of our time. We're stuck in this line every day. And sure, you order ahead, and it does save 30 seconds, 45 seconds, because we don't have to order. But, Samantha, I just think with all this time that I've wasted, I could have wrote a book. I could have finished my novel. Are you done? I'm done. You could have finished your novel? I think I might have. You don't like Starbucks, but we have the Starbucks app on our phones. I did for you. You don't like Starbucks, but I got you that Starbucks tumbler for Christmas. You don't like Starbucks, but in a zombie apocalypse, what do you think would be first to go? Big corporate businesses or small local businesses? I'll give you a hint. I'd still be able to get Starbucks for about the first month of an apocalypse. That's a good point. It is a great point. I've really thought it through. Maybe tomorrow I don't go with you. I stay at home because I hate putting on clothes to go outside anyways. I'm just wearing my robe and my slippers just like you. So maybe I'll stay home and I can work on my novel and you can get the Starbucks. That'd be pretty nice. I'll never get any alone time. And if you stayed home and worked on your novel and I went to Starbucks by myself, it would give me all sorts of opportunity to zone out by myself or perhaps force me to go inside and make friends. Like. You need alone time? Even after I got you that big sweater that fits two people for Christmas? Even after I make sure I'm the last thing you see before you go to bed and the first thing you see when you wake up? You need alone time? Honey, I give you a safe space and now I kind of feel like you're not wanting to give me safe space. That's true. I'm That's being, true? I'm being two-faced. <laughs> I'm not giving you the space you need. We've been together for 45 years and... I think at some point we stopped listening. We stopped listening and we stopped caring about what people, what, what, what each other thought. We stopped caring about that. I never knew you needed alone time. The same way you didn't know that I didn't like Starbucks. Yeah, I really didn't. I thought you loved a little salted caramel in your cup in the morning. I thought you loved me going into the bathroom when you're using the bathroom. I 
really don't. I haven't been able to poop in a week because <laughs> you keep coming in. I know. I didn't hear a single splash when I was in there. But if you want me to be in the bathroom while you're going, like, I can do that for you. Well, I have no idea. I feel like we're on the cusp of being entirely new people in the sense of not that I don't love you anymore or anything like that. Nothing scary, but a lot of things that we could enjoy we don't know about. We can think about these things apart, and then maybe we can come together and, and share those things and see which ones we can share. Yeah. I'm going to get out while you wait in line, all right? And I'm just going to stare at the sky and think about those things. You mean I can have from here till I get up to the window all by myself? I'm terrified. I love you, Tilly. Scene. What a happy couple. They just learned how to communicate again. Yeah, they've got this whole new relationship that's about to happen. A new era. I'm like actually really excited for them. I'm very happy for them. I also couldn't tell if it was like an old man and an old lady or if it was just two old ladies. I think it felt like two old ladies. It did. But you didn't name me. Samantha. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'm sorry. See, I wasn't listening, which is totally Samantha. That's totally Samantha. And I was just talking, talking, talking. That's so Tilly. It is so Tilly. Tilly and Samantha. Hmm. Sweethearts. Well, that about wraps it up. So we're going to throw it over to you. You got that camera right there. What's going on? You got anything coming up? Well, we've got the sketch show. So if you're in Austin, come see, or if you're near Austin, or if you're not, then fly to Austin to see our egg party rough cut sketch show at the fallout theater at 7 p.m on january 28th and 29th tickets are at eggpartycomedy.com just gonna plug that in there yeah just throw the website in there why not we've been selling out so if you don't come you're a moron i wanted to end on an aggressive note yeah if you don't come we hate you yeah no like that's fair totally up to you guys if you don't want to come that's your decision because you're adults you're adults you're adults basic adults Mm -hmm. but if you don't come then like you're not as smart as you could have been yeah anything else you'd like to say to me lucas your middle part looks nice you look like the boy from the 13th year the disney channel original movie who i always had a crush on (laughs) 